When I was in uh, college and graduate school, I always loved it when the professor would give us the test questions beforehand, and then we'd have an open book test. And I loved it because it just gave me the opportunity. I knew the questions, I could study it, I could go research it, put it all together, and then get a decent grade out of it. And so I loved that approach. I'm not sure I learned as much as I should have in that approach, but nevertheless, it was a great approach. And I could never understand the, the classmates of mine who they had all the questions, but they just didn't do the work. They didn't put it together, and I'm sure sometimes I didn't do that either. Jesus in the Gospel today gives us the questions for our final test. He tells you this is a picture of the Last Judgment here in Matthew's Gospel. And he tells us very, very clearly what we're going to be judged on at the final coming of Christ. It's whether or not we have truly loved others and given ourselves to others. To clothe the naked, to care for the hungry, for the poor, the neglected, the ill, the imprisoned, the stranger. And to welcome them and to care for them. And in doing so, certainly to respond to their human needs, but also to recognize Christ there, that Christ is in the midst of those people who are in need. Jesus tells us very, very clearly what that final exam is going to be for each and every one of us. But then we all have that decision of what am I going to do about it? Am I really going to act upon it? Or am I just going to kind of slough off for now and hope that maybe Something will happen right before I die. The challenge is there, and the decision is ours. I'm so very, very impressed within our parish here of how generous so many people are in responding in those corporal works of mercy. You know, the corporal works of mercy really come from Matthew 25 here of caring for the corporal, the bodily needs of others. And I'm so impressed at how many wonderful things happen because of the generosity of so many. But that's a personal responsibility that we have, and it's obvious that so many are responding to that personal responsibility of loving other people and in loving them to love Christ. That truly what it is about. And so we, on this Feast of Christ the King, are once again reminded that we're not just called to do nice charitable deeds, though. A lot of people really are taking care of the poor and the neglected and the hungry by trying to work for changes in a society in which there is poverty, in which there is lack of opportunity, in which there are so many times when the stranger is not welcome into our midst, that we are challenged to not just to give out a little bit of charity with a potluck meal, but rather we are called to try to make it possible for people to provide for themselves, to change things that undermine the dignity of the human person, of making a transformation within our world. And I think that's part of what we're going to be judged on as well, is have we really tried to make a difference of not just, as the old saying goes, of giving a person a fish, but teaching them how to fish. We are called to make that more enduring difference in people's lives. And finally, we're also reminded that the least of the brethren are not just the people out there, it's the people sitting next to you. It's the people with whom you share life and your love day in and day out. That they too are the, among the least of the brethren. And to be able to see Christ in the, that person, to treat each other with that deep love and respect, 
with that tremendous care, recognizing certainly the human dignity of those with whom we share life, but also to recognize within them the beautiful presence of Christ Jesus. Christ will return at some time. He's going to bring together all of this world into the fullness of his kingdom. And where we are in relationship with that, we already have the test questions. The challenge is, how will we respond to them? With true love, with true caring. For certainly the law of Jesus is very simple. Love one another as I have loved you. That's what our daily life is about, loving each other as Christ loves us.